in space. I mean, is it? I mean, it's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Out there in space, it's magic. The the kids can watch in on Fridays at eight thirty and see the magic of space. Them. I don't know of any show that's had quite the impact, uh, you know, of, of just really taken off. <laughs> that was a little trouble, Mr. Captain. Uh, uh, this thing was really, uh, no one could ever get this thing off the ground, oh, that's sure. for sure, because oh, he, uh, no, no, he you, made this. No, you don't understand. Hmm? You see, I'm Captain Kirk, and I can make this thing get off the ground. Well, let me examine it but a he, moment. But he made it here, and, you know, with this hammer and... Well, I understand that, I understand that, but, but Harlow, let me, let me, let me give it a try. Oh, well, we don't... I, I can at least try it, can't I? I mean, no, no phasers or anything like that in it, I don't think. No, that's all. All right. Uh, not only Captain Kirk, but Bill Shatner will, yeah, will, will hey, listen, offer it. Well, let's talk about Bill uh, Shatner just a moment. Uh, I understand you used to uh, do different kind of acting roles like Shakespeare, and yeah. that's kind of my specialty. Really? Yeah, like, uh, well, now, let, uh, uh, let me... Be it not that even before them to those that even to we are not them that were there. I mean, I recall that, huh? That's from that play... What now, my friend, is this too much? Not really. I mean, uh, uh, does but he know something about Shakespeare, really? I sure right. think I remember that. Yeah. Do you recall the play? Uh, it was... Uh, no. No, I was just making that <laughs> oh, up. I know. Hey, uh, well... It sounded good, though. You live in California. I live in California. I'm visiting... Actually, to tell the, the kids the truth, uh, I'm visiting uh, uh, Indianapolis just to tell everybody that uh, Star Trek is on a new night now, not Thursday nights anymore, but on Friday nights. At 8.30. That's really oh, why that's I'm really here. Exciting. That's really why I came down to see you two and to tell your audience that very message. And I had another reason for coming. What was that? I wanted to help you with your balloon. Uh, you, know, you mean, listen, Carlos? You think, uh, I mean, I, I hate to impose on you, but if you think you could give us a hand, boy, we'd sure appreciate There's it. You mean you there. can make it? Maybe. I'm going to give it a try. I'll try some strange, exotic method. Some, some way of, of, of getting this thing off the ground that nobody's ever thought of. In this world, or you will really, really be super now, if you get that job done. Nobody's ever thought of getting a balloon up in this manner. I don't know. It, but Harlow, it's it's doing some good. It's going up. It's going up. It's great. It's going up. Bye, Captain. Goodbye. <laughs> Maybe I'd better back up here and help you just a little bit. Horseshoe Hal had a very short life. He only lasted 1953 and part of 54. Then Captain Hal with that Popeye show jumped in there. <laughs> and I did that about three years. So of the six years I was in Youngstown, I was doing something with children for five of those six years. And what was so crazy is that I was doing an adult Hal's a Poppin show a disc jockey variety show in the afternoons now you're going to say man they must have loved you you must have been really super fantastic let me explain and this is something nobody remembers the earliest days of tv networks did not supply programming for the whole day. The reason I had that program is because NBC in this case was not supplying programs between 9 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock. Dave Garraway and the Today Show was on from 7 to 9. Then we went dark. There was no programming. So people starting out in the business in those days were so lucky because we got to do things simply because they needed to fill the time. And How's a Poppin' went on for about three and a half years. We always did sketches and funny things and helped the local charities. And we had pancake eating contests. We had uh, uh, the uh, Little Abner, Sadie Hawkins Day Race. And in, if no one was ever in a Sadie Hawkins Day race, they really missed it. And again, the station spared no expense. Cameras out on the street, the main drag in Youngstown, Ohio, and we were off to the, to the races with that. Let's talk a little bit about that uh, red jacket that we used with uh, Harlow during 1960 and 1972. The, uh, there was no real uh, reason for that, but it just seemed to fit 
fit the, uh, the uh, character very, very well. Uh, and if you look closely, the first one didn't actually fit me to, it was a little bit short. <laughs> and I was in those days about six foot two, but I think the sleeves, if you really examined it very close, didn't come up. So whether that came out of a costume shop somewhere <laughs> and they, they just made good, I'm, I'm not sure. But surprisingly, because most of the time we're only one uh, once a week, uh, they held up pretty well. So I would say of the red stripe, there were only four or five maybe at the, at the most, and it, you would think there would be more. But in 1966, I think we made the switch to the other. I was then also working for an advertising agency, and they had what we called a dog and pony show. That is, we created a presentation to prospect for new clients and had them come in and see us do our stuff. Well, the setting was kind of a circus uh, deal, and we were supposed to be vendors. And we had a, a popcorn um, carrier and a, a straw, straw hat, so that worked out very nicely. Anyhow, that thing only lasted one or two nights. And what are we going to do? We had about eight of those jackets. So I inherited all of the multi-striped jackets. And it worked out very nicely because by then, color TV was so prevalent and uh, so regular that it added quite a bit to, to uh, the character. And surprisingly, out on the personal appearances, and that was a whole nother life, as you could well guess, uh, I, I think everybody thought, well, that's a sharp outfit that that, that uh, fella has. The hats now, it's too hard to calculate. I would say sometimes on a personal appearance, I would finish off three in that one appearance. If I got a lot of pies or if we had a knockabout stuff with a plastic baseball bat or something, they went pretty fast. And this lovely thing back here, can we see it at all? Uh, I got in Marion, Indiana in 1965. I had done that very thing. I had beat up a hat so badly that for a second show, I needed to go into town. So I went to the Goodwill store in Marion and said, would you? Why, sure, they had all kinds of straw hats. So I got this, and why it is still in one piece, I do not know. Would you look at that? Isn't that something? Uh, why it uh, is still here, I don't know. But it's a sentimental thing, as you could well guess, and I'll take it to a program. In fact, I have done a program just the week that we're, we're recording this, and I only let them look. They can't touch. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but they get a kick out of seeing that it's still in one partial piece. <laughs> the only other thing that I don't wear too much nowadays is a bow tie, and uh, in my current appearances, I'll maybe show it to you later, I have a Three Stooges tie that I wear because of all those years with, with uh, Harlow and the show. So that kind of covers the bases, I think, on the jacket and the hats. Now, I don't want you to think that I was the only one on television, or Curly, or Jerry. The other stations had an interesting array, and being an independent station, Channel 4 is thought of, even to this day, as almost exclusively being a children's show station, because they didn't have a network to fill up the time. They used local personalities and did a wonderful job. The first, here we go, Popeye host over there was not Janie. It was Captain Jim. And Captain Jim later became the sales manager at my Channel 6 station. Well, then who replaced him?